This is Missouri. You can travel back in time to the Old West. Go down the Mississippi like Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer. Or go for a drive on Route 66. The Show Me State will show you a good time. But Mike Iconelli is an urban angler from Jersey. He's come to St. Louis on a mission. Not to sing the blues, eat the barbecue, or drink the beer. He's looking for great fishing. Oh my God. This is City Limits Fishing, St. Louis. St. Louis, right there. We sent a champion angler to some great cities on a mission. They like it. They like it. Oh my God, I've never seen one that big. <laughs> Chicago River within the city limits, and that's my limit! Yeah! This is City Limits Fishing with Mike Iconelli. Summertime in St. Louis is when people spend their time outside enjoying city life. We're on the Mississippi River trying to catch a limit of fish. I'm focused on my line when suddenly on the other side of the river, a worker slips and falls off the barge over 10 feet down and splashes into the river. A co-worker frantically yells for us to help. We quickly pull up our lines and race to help the man. We have to get to him before the current sucks him under the barge. This dramatic story has never been told until now. The day begins like most other days on the Mississippi River. Barges move freight, commuters travel to work, and like most city limit shoots, we meet up with the guests and talk about fishing. I don't know a lot about St. Louis, but I do know a lot about catfish. One of my early loves fishing was catfish. I start unpacking my rods, and I'm starting to realize, you know what? This is probably not the right tackle for giant cats. If we blow it up, we blow it up, as long as the catfish comes in the boat. We don't care about the rod, we want to land the fish. Ryan Casey is a catfish guide on the Mississippi. St. Louis has got to be one of the greatest catfisheries on the planet. We back the boat down the cobblestones into the water. No ramp needed. We start running to our first spot. We've got bridges, we've got barge traffic. I mean, this is urban fishing. Our challenge is to catch a limit of 10 blue catfish in eight hours within the city limits of St. Louis. 10 fish, two guys, eight hours. That's not much of a challenge down here. I'm not sure about it being not much of a challenge, but all I see in this river is trouble. The barge traffic's crazy. I mean, it's nonstop traffic. If you want to be sharp, you want to keep your eyes on what you're doing out here. It's like full combat fishing out here. I mean, you got to worry about you gotta worry about barges crashing into you, man. This is crazy. We go around a line of moored barges to the backside. Even here, the current is powerful. There's a big one there, man. A couple of them. They're here. <laughs> I'm ready. Ryan goes up front, drops the trolling motor. I go to the back, I grab my rod. I'm ready to fish, but you know, I'm not sure how we're gonna catch these cats. Ryan grabs the skipjack and starts cutting it up. I like to take that first cut and make a nice fillet off of one side, and then I'll, I'll three-quarter cut him, and uh, that, that head bait seems to be the ticket out there for the bigger fish. We fish on the bottom in 25 to 40 feet of water, and we're marking fish. I don't want to say I'm superstitious, but, you know, I really like to cater my facial hair toward the day of fishing. Today, you know, I go with the catfish whiskers, you know, old school 70s catfish whiskers, you know, to kind of try to match that look of the catfish. I, I can dig that. I mean, I've seen crazier from my face. And I think these big cats are going to like it. We're less than 30 minutes into the first trip. And 
I really doubt it. And I mean, he's right there, so I, I crossed his eyes. First fish. Oh my God. Come on in the boat, baby. Get that thing in here. <laughs> Pretty decent fish, you know, and uh, there's definitely excitement. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Look at that thing. He makes a couple more jerks, and there he comes up to the surface. <laughs> That's a nice oh blue cat. Oh my God. It's our first cat of the day. He puts it in the boat. It's a giant blue cat. How big is that? This one? Probably about 12 pounds, I guess. Oh my gosh. Both hooks. And there's. Oh my gosh. Look at that pretty fish. Look at that thing. Dude, that's a giant. It's a nice, healthy. For the first one of the day. Grain fed catfish. If this is a sign of how today is going to go, things are going to be good. Let's get this one back in. We're at the end of the drift, so Ryan pulls up the trolling motor, and we run back up the river to start our second drift. We're going to start a little bit different drift, a little more outside, and see if we can find a little bit more active fish. Ryan pulls out two additional rods for each of us to fish and starts rigging them. I'm just watching it. Hey, this is nice, man. This is a nice <laughs> treat. He's the catfish guru. I'm not. I'm a bass guy. I kind of like the fact that, uh, you know, I was willing to tie his rigs up, and, you know, I don't mind because I'm used to it. I I'm lazy. I'm going to let him do it. So now we're fishing two rods each. I like our chances. We're starting our drift, and we've got the side rods out, and uh, boom. There's a decent fish. Oh! <laughs> On the side rod? Yeah, side rod. That's a good fish. That's better. These fish will, will pull and pull. Oh, this one's just, just going nuts. <laughs> we want to get those hooks out of that fish as fast as I can because I got to get that rod back in the water. It's not even been an hour, and we've got two like world-class catfish in the boat. Is this happening? Is this really happening? I heard there was 10, 15 feet catfish that can eat a whole man. That's what they told me, but, you know, I'm not going to dive in here and check it out. Ryan Casey and I are fishing for blue catfish in St. Louis. We're an hour into the day, and we've already caught two huge keepers. I fished for cats a lot when I was a kid but I never did it drifting. Drifting for catfish is one of the most effective ways to catch large numbers of fish and some big fish as well. Ryan runs the trolling motor from the back of the boat with a remote control he wears around his neck. Speed is the key. Speed up and down, left and right, keeping ourselves on the drift that we need to be on and uh, keeping an eye on where those fish are sitting. The graph is no. marking a lot of fish on the bottom. I focus on my rod tip. There he is. As I'm watching him fight that fish, all of a sudden I look over and my side rod goes down. I pick my side rod up. I'm fighting this fish. I'm not going to. All right, double. I get mine in the top. I'm like, what? Oh. I bring it in. It's like it's like a little one. They are. I catch the babies. <laughs> <laughs> I catch the baby. I'm like. Is this, did this catfish come from Jersey? How'd it get to St. Louis? I, I reach down, grab the leader on that fish, and pull it in. Hey, what, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture? I don't Hold think anything's wrong with Look it, Mike. I think this is about Look at this. What's wrong with this picture? It looks right to me. That's his baby. Look, he just gave birth to that cat. <laughs> We're barely an hour into this thing, and we've got our fourth fish in the boat. All right, here we go. The current is fast and powerful. The barges are kicking up big waves. It's real topsy-turvy out there, so, you know, you, you've got to pay attention to what you're doing. I mean, you don't want to ride the reel to go over, and you don't want to fall in, so it, it's kind of crazy fishing. Ryan has three cats. I only have one baby. Is he spanking me? Absolutely. He's catching more fish. He's more dialed in. But you know what? I'm a fast learner. I have a feeling I'm going to catch up before the day's over. I'm watching my rod tip. I'm impatient. There's a beast. Wait, I'm waiting. All of a sudden, I see my rod just go. Yeah, there he is. Pick up the rod. I set the hook. 
Man, this is a good one. This is a good one. Oh, God. And I can't bug it. I mean, this, this thing's just got, it's got girth to it. Oh, it's not this thing. It's on the death row. It's on the death row. We finally get it in. Ryan puts it in the boat. Oh, we got it. That's a nice one, Mike. 17, 18 pounds. Pound for pound, these cats are the hardest fighting fish in fresh water. Oh, that was sick. Did you see that I bite? Saw it. Oh, my God. We're halfway to our limit. But if we never catch another cat the rest of the day, I'm, I'm pretty stoked right now. I'm pretty happy. Oh, boy. Gosh, look at that thing. Look at a beautiful, beautiful creature that is. We're at the end of the drift, so we pull up the trolling motor, fire up the engine, and run up the river towards one of the world's most famous structures. The Gateway Arch is a monument to the pioneer spirit that won the West. Over four million people visit it each year. Tell me about the people in St. Louis. They are friendly. There are gardens, museums, art, and music. Blues, the blues. Oh, we have a wonderful symphony. There's beer and baseball. Basham, go Cardinals. It's a city with ethnic diversity. It uh, has a growing international community. People enjoy fried ravioli, frozen custard, and good food. I fried some catfish fillets. Gotcha. Chef Mike yep. Winkler makes those. catfish ravioli, starting with noodles and spinach. a Cajun sauce. We're going to roll those together with some pepper jack cheese and mozzarella. Then he adds the catfish, Creole sauce, garlic aioli, Cajun cream, and fried basil. Cajun style catfish ravioli, this is the taste of St. Louis. The weather is changing rapidly, and it starts to drizzle. The moving barometer, I really like that for the catfishing. So uh, it's, a, it's a good weather day. You know, it could do with a little less rain, but um, you, you take what you get when you're out here. We pull up to a spot next to a power plant on the Illinois side of the river. I'm fiddling with mine. I don't even think I put mine in the water yet. And all of a sudden, like that, bam! That's a good fish. Oh, my God! And this fish has just got so much torque on it. I, I, I can barely get this right out of the holder. It's that one we've been looking for here, Mike. Every inch I get, he takes a foot. Oh, there he goes. And then he goes on a crazy run and just peels oh, the rag. Come on, baby. Oh, there he goes. Look at that. 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 And I pull this net out. Dude, the net is like, it goes, I, it's like 10 foot long. It's like this giant paddle. Oh my god! Oh, this this thing is unbelievable. We get it in the boat. We're looking at it laying there, and it's it's breathtaking. Oh my god! Oh my god! I never seen one that big. You know, this fish is pushing 50 pounds. Start to shake, I let go, he swims off. <laughs> Unbelievable, oh my god. Is it true that the big cats have a tendency to get loose? Um, I've never seen one running amok in the city. <laughs> Ryan Casey and I are fishing for blue catfish in St. Louis. We're just two hours into the day, and already we have six keepers in the boat. The rain gets heavier as we run back up to the power plant to make another drift. We're not on this drift, but a, but a few minutes, and bam, my rod gets hit again. He's, he's just a little guy. We're a little over two hours in. We've got seven fish. This is a healthy example of a... Nice little blue cat. All right, little guy. Ryan releases the fish, and I immediately hook up. Oh, that's good. I'm reeling in, I'm reeling in. I get it all the way in the boat. 
the thing pops off. I touched it with the boat grip, but it came off. All right, we won't count that one. Unless that fish actually gets in the boat, it's not a legal fish. The rain picks up. We put on our rain gear and run back up the river close to the arch. We're starting to get concerned about the weather, but uh, we're going to keep fishing. All right. Fish heads, fish heads, roly poly fish heads. To continue our drift down, we go down. Finally, I get another bite. Set the hook. Put the fish in the boat. You know, here's the amazing thing. You look at a cat like that, it's a world-class catfish. And you look behind me right there, and there's St. Louis right there. Look at that. Unbelievable. Man, we are on a roll. We're at number eight. So we drift down a little bit more, get another bite, uh, set the hook, <coughs> bite that thing. Put it in the boat, another 10 pound plus blue pack. All of a sudden it hits us. Well, yeah. Reality sets in, you know what? That's fish number nine. If we catch number 10, that's it. The day's over. And guess what? I haven't caught a giant yet. I immediately hook up again, but it's not a giant either. And, and now I'm thinking, I'm like, wait a minute. If I put this fish in the boat, then it's 10 fish and we're done. Oh! Oh, God, he only got off. Darn it. I hated to see that one I get off. I tried to get home with those pliers and it just came off. Gosh, that might have been the tournament winning fish there and I messed it up. That's all right, we'll just keep going. Right away, Ryan hooks a small cat. We're catching one after the other. They're small fish. He gets it into the boat and breaks it off. Oh, it broke me. This is not the one. Catching all these small cats is a lot of fun. But uncharacteristically, we leave an active spot and move to an area that may have big fish. It's a fateful decision with unforeseen consequences. We run through downtown St. Louis past the arch. This is urban fishing. You want to talk about city fishing? This is happening right here. This is city fishing. I'm goofing around, talking to the catfish. I don't see the accident happen on the other side of the river. Ryan doesn't see it either, but the camera does. Look closely. You can see the person walking on the barge, falling over the side, and splashing into the water. The next thing you know, Hey! Hey! And these guys are just screaming at us. Rick Bracken runs over in our chase boat. We crank up our lines and run to the barge. But I'm racing as fast as I can over to where I see Rick. Rick is pulling the man into his boat just as we arrive. Grabbed him by the hand and we lifted him in the boat. Strong, He's almost shaky. You know, he looks tired. He looks worn down. I mean, this was really a life or death experience. Joe Marshall says he was working on the barge when he slipped and fell into the water and nearly drowned. Stepped down, slid. When I slid, I went right off. You go in that Mississippi River, uh, I don't care if you have a life jacket on or not. A lot of times out, you're not making it out alive. I'm glad you're all right, man. <laughs> Thanks. Glad to you. Marshall's co-workers cheer when we bring him ashore. They know it's a miracle that he survived his plunge into the mighty Mississippi. You're lucky. Yeah, very lucky. This is Mike. Check out my book, Fishing on the Edge, and you'll learn why I never give up. For more information on clothing, gear, and equipment used on the show, go to MikeIconelli.com. Ryan Casey and I are fishing for blue catfish in St. Louis. We have nine keepers, but we want the temp to be a monster. We run back down the river to make a few more drifts. We've had our fill of little fish. We we're tired of shaking them up. We wanted a big one. We're gonna put on some monster baits. We're going for big fish. Go big or go home. 
Lion hooks up with less than 40 <laughs> minutes to go. There he is. I get him up to the side of the boat. Last blue cat of the day. Time is running out, so we decide to keep the fish. There's simply not enough time to risk our limit for the sake of catching a monster. And he's yeah. in the boat. There you go. See your limits, baby. St. Louis. There's, There's our limit right, right there. Not the 40 or 50 pounder we wanted, but a giant. We have our limit, but decide to fish until time runs out. We continue drifting down through the barges, and next thing you know, Mike, Mike's like this. Oh, there he is! <laughs> and this thing's a giant. This thing is a toad. I mean, I can't even budge him. I can't reel. Oh, God. There we go. Brian scoops it, puts it in the boat. Touchdown! Get this right. Look at that thing. The perfect exclamation point to an awesome and sick day of catfish. End of the day, our 11th keeper of the day, and you end it with a fish like that. That's unbelievable. It's not the monster that I hope to get, <sighs> but it's a great fish and a fitting end to an incredible day. I couldn't have enjoyed it anymore being out there fishing with Mike. I had one of the times of my life. I'll never forget it. Time runs out. We pull up the rods and the trolling motor and head back to the ramp. You know, when you come to St. Louis and you think about St. Louis blues, you think about the music, you think about the hockey team, and now you think about the monster cats.